Now, how general is this idea that they're going to collect less than the amount of the subsidy? Well, let's think about one real world subsidy. Let's think about the ethanol subsidy. That is, we're going to subsidize corn farmers to turn corn into ethanol. And you might ask, well, geez, seems like a pretty inefficient way to help out my farmer buddies, right? I got to make them build ethanol plants and convert all that corn into ethanol. And why is that going to be a good way to help my buddies in the, in the corn farming business? Okay. So how are we going to analyze that? So let's think about corn being used for two things. Corn on the one hand is used to feed cattle and pigs and everything else. Used mostly as an animal feed. So, so this is the feed market. And there's some demand for corn in the feed market. And let's assume prior to the ethanol introduction, we have a supply and demand equilibrium in this market. And we have an equilibrium price for corn an equilibrium quantity of corn. And I got some supplier surplus or profits going to my corn farmers. And you say, Kevin, come on, are you crazy? Corn farming is the most competitive market I could possibly think of. How in the world are there profits in corn farming? To which Kevin would say what? There are tons of profits in corn farming. They just don't show up as profits. That is if I, why do I have upward sloping supply here? What's generating upward sloping supply in my corn market? That is, there are different types of land. Some land very suited to growing corn. That's very down here on this supply curve. Some land much less suited well for growing corn. And as the demand for corn goes up, we have to push corn production to that more marginal land, which pushes up the price of corn, which makes the inframarginal corn land more valuable. That means the land is going to collect the profits. If I have a corn business where I have to pay the market price for the land, I'm going to look like I'm earning zero profits. But that doesn't mean an economist would think of that as zero profits. There's positive profits. They're just being collected by the land, which is very, very important. You don't want to look at the world and say that I can measure the profits that exist out there by simply looking at the counting books. And you might, usually the criticism people say, well, the problem with accounting is that they are not marked to market, right? That's the usual criticism of accounting. Well, those books don't mean anything. They're based on historical costs. They're not really marked to market. But that's not this problem. In fact, if you mark to market, you get zero profits all the time. Because by definition, the value of all the value of the output has to go to somebody. And if you price every all the inputs at their market value, you're going to exhaust the input. You're going to exhaust the output value. The problem is really that you want to mark assets at their opportunity cost, but the market, market, you know, that's their next best use. But the market prices things at their best use. That's what we call the rent or profit, in this case, going to the land. So that's a, a diversion. But anyway, and that, in fact, when he's helping his corn buddies, who's he helping? The guy driving the tractor? Who's going to collect? Who are the buddies here? The landowners. Provided, what are you assuming when you tell me it's the landowner? that what differentiates one farm project from another is the land. 
What if there were some guys who were really good at growing corn and other guys who weren't so good? Then he, his buddies could be the growers. Or maybe it's a seed producer who's really good at producing seeds with limit, right? The key question is, what assets generate this upward sloping supply? Those are his buddies, right? If you, you got to identify in a competitive market view of the world, his buddies are the guys who have the upward sloping supply. The guys who own these inframarginal assets are going to become more valuable as we push up the price of corn.